Hi, I'm Miller, and welcome to another Miller's Gaming video. The Nintendo Switch is now seven years old, so it's time for me to do a collection update for this amazing handheld. So I'm going to just jump straight into it. I've grouped things by category like Nintendo, first party, RPGs, regional wars, etc. So you can feel free to chop and change around to the sections that interest you most. So I'm going to start with the first party stuff, jumping right away with Animal Crossing New Horizons, aka the pandemic game, which... Yeah, I was one of those that played it during lockdown. It was my first Animal Crossing game, and I really enjoyed this one. Um, even at this point, Nintendo haven't updated it at all, like a lot of people expected. There's still a lot of content here, even more so if you do go to the unofficial mod scene. Tears of the Kingdom, this game was one of the only new Switch releases I played last year that was not a visual novel or an RPG. Well, technically this is an RPG with some RPG elements, but that's the semantics. I did enjoy this one a lot, I didn't finish it, but I'll have to get back to it at some point because I really enjoyed this one, especially given the Monosoft-esque design, which was pretty clear that they is in there because they, well, co-developed it. On to all the Mario stuff now, and I've got lots of Mario to talk about. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. This is one of a handful of Wii U ports I have in the collection. This game was one of my most wanted ports because I hadn't played 3D World despite owning the Wii U. However, having 3D World in its best and most definitive form on the Switch alongside the fantastic Bowser's Fury makes this title a must-have. Super Mario Odyssey, this game was my must-have for the console. I bought a Switch partly because I wanted to play this game because it's 3D Mario and 3D Mario is probably one of my biggest killer apps because these games are amazing and Mario Odyssey is no different. This is the best 3D Mario game since Super Mario Galaxy 1. Super Mario 3D All-Stars, this is pretty controversial because if you know anything about this game it's about Nintendo and just yeah let's just not leave this available digitally you can go to CEX now and you can see copies for sale for like 65 pounds which is even worse online yeah I don't recommend paying 65 pounds or even more than that for this but I do recommend the games themselves they're all fantastic and if the best part is they're also available on other platforms 2D Mario now with New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe this is the best game in the new Super Mario Bros. 2D platforming game series. I do recommend this one. I think it's a pretty good game. It's definitely, it's one that came out last so people kind of were starting to get sick of it, of the whole formula. Well actually it didn't come out last. Well technically New Super Luigi U did come out last but New Super Mario Bros. 2 came out for the 3DS afterwards and that game is even worse than uh, in terms of how stale it is. So this game is the only one you really need. Unless you want to play the multiplayer on the Wii and I'll always have a soft spot for that game too, but this is a Switch video, not a Wii one. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, this is where Nintendo innovated and made a fantastic game. They let their staff cook this game for many years, and it's literally one of the best platforming games available on the Switch, and one of the best in recent years. We really need more games like this, and hope to see more Mario magic like this in 2D very soon. Another Wii U port, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I didn't play the Wii U original, but I played it here with the Mario Odyssey exclusive courses, and I had fun. This is a really cute, charming game with a simple mechanic of Captain Toad not being able to jump and spawn into this epic, like, 10-hour adventure. Probably more if you struggle with platformers, but this game is very approachable. It's a fun little puzzle game. Definitely recommend this one. It's also on the 3DS as well. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I bought a Wii U for this game. I bought the DLC on Wii U, and then I bought it again on the Switch, and then I bought the Booster Course Pass, and I'm still happy and satisfied with this game. It's a game that I recommend to people if you're new to the Nintendo Switch or gaming in general. There's so much variety, it's approachable for pretty much anyone, and there's just a lot of longevity. Even if I've only played the Wii U the original since like day one, I got a Wii U for this game as well. Yep. Can you see I like Nintendo consoles and Mario games and now RPGs and vision novels, which we'll get to? I thought like Part of me does have this feeling of fatigue as well because I've been playing for so long since the original. So in that sense, I'm glad the game's done, but I'm also glad with what here is excellent. There is a physical release in Japan that has the booster course pass on the cart except Wave 6, but if it ever gets reprinted to include Wave 6, I will probably replace it because I want it all on one cart. Nintendo Switch Sports. Now, as someone who's been a fan of the Touch Generation series of games so like Wii Sports, Wii Play, brain training, those kind of things since like the noughties. God, that was a long fucking time ago. I am really glad that this was revived in some form, even if it was a bit imperfect. I've just been some controversies with it, like the leg strap not being compatible properly at launch and that. 
and the other patches later for Nintendo's online games, which I think did hurt the game, because what's here at its core is a solid product, and I wouldn't say a return to form, but still, I'm so glad it's revived, and I would love to see something properly done without patches and the release now, add content later model down the line for another console. Switch 2 sports, please. Jumping right into the RPGs now, which are still related to Nintendo because they published it, and that's the Xenoblade Chronicles series, starting with number one. This is the, well, definitive edition of the first game, and it really shows. In some ways, it feels more like a remaster than a remake in some elements because broadly the story is basically the same outside of the future connected chapter, but it's definitive pretty much every way. The graphics have been revamped, the music has been redone for the overworld themes for the most part, but the original source is there too. It, it really feels like the ultimate way to play. There's also some accessibility stuff with the easier difficulty setting. It's definitely a game that's great. This is what kickstarted the Xeno series. Like, not, not getting popular, but what really began to give it a firm foothold where Nintendo gave Monolith the creative freedom to make amazing stuff. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, aka the most controversial Xenoblade game, which I don't think it deserves that much of a reputation. Like, there's definitely some aspects of it that do go against it, but what I really liked about it is the story's really strong, especially in the last few chapters. The characters are really cool. The I do like how it all the whole blade dynamic thing is really cool. The gacha mechanics in this game, but is good because it doesn't require real money, and that's what how you should do gacha, not this shit you get the on phones. This is good. Check it out and check out Torna Two, which is basically the prequel to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and this is a standalone title, so you can play Tauna without playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and some people consider this game to be better. I played it last year, and I had a great time with it. It's about 20 hours long, which I think is pretty good. It really teaches you how to do like side quests, and really take your time with games and do them to get around the community tab where you have to do them to, to finish a story, but... It's really good because side quest and RPGs can be really good, and Xenoblade is a great example of that. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, aka the best Xenoblade game. This game fixes the lingering flaws of the first two games while bringing everything together from the first two games into this merged world of Ionios. With great characters, great music, incredible story, and the, the most easy to get into battle system of the entire saga. It's just so good. And then Future redeems like the cream on top of an already fantastic cake. Related to Monolith Soft, Baton Kytos 1 and 2 HD Remaster. I did a video for Baton Kytos 1 last year, which I had a great time with. Uh, well, making the video and playing the game. Uh, this has got some great quality of life features. And this physical copy is exclusive to everywhere except North America, so check it out, um, import, buy, check it out, hopefully we get Baton Cutters 3 or at least a PC port which has been rated, I think it'd be cool if these came to PC, but I'm kind of doubtful because Nintendo, I believe they co-own this franchise with Bandai Namco, but that's, uh, I'm not an insider, I'm just someone who talks about video games on the internet and with a White Album 2 wall scroll, I need that game on Switch by the way, so um, educated guests decide, let's move on. Another epic saga, which is still ongoing, we have the Trails series. Uh, we're gonna start with the Sky Games. Oh wait, they're not on Switch. So we're gonna start with Trails from Zero, aka the fourth game in the series. And this is, well, the, probably of the three games I've played before that started the saga, this is the best paced one. I was really anxious to play this one at first because you're playing as police officers, which may be uncomfortable, but that kind of, uh, went away pretty quickly, thank fuck. Um, yeah, I mentioned it in my video on the Crossbill games, and some people uh, uh, didn't like me even mentioning it, which I kind of understand, but it was a formative part of my experiences with the game, so I talked about it. And uh, it wouldn't be my channel if I wasn't open about my experiences with certain video games. And yeah, I fucking love these games, so, well, I haven't got the rest of them yet, but trust me, Zero. Trust as a which is the direct sequel to Trails from Zero, which is another all-time favourite, as a result of just one of the best climaxes in the video game, really awesome characters, and just a story that really goes places, where even if you know some of the plot twists that are coming, it's just so wonderfully told, it's just an excellent game, an excellent experience all around. Legend of Nuta, Boundless Trails, this is a spin-off title for the series, it's basically Zway 3, 
and the protagonist is well his surname is Herschel so a lot of people believe that he's related to Toa Herschel and there are some hints of that but not been officially retconned into the franchise yet but Knowing Falcon wouldn't be surprised if we get to like the final Trails game and it's like, oh hey Toa, it's your grandfather. They can tell you about Doi and all the other characters from this game, what they got up to. It's now officially retconned into the series lore. Uh, I haven't played this one yet because you can see this beautiful shine. I am going to break this off some point and play it and hopefully love it. I already love the music. Gold Steel 3. Uh, obviously Cold Steel 1 and 2 aren't on Switch in English, officially anyway. There are fan translations of those games you can totally find online. As well as the Japanese Clamored Leopard ports, which but not by Falcom and they're not by Exceed. And I know, yeah, people, something Exceed licensing issues, we don't know because we're not insiders. Again, we have this weird situation where this is the first Falcom game on the Switch after E8. And it's a good game, like a, like a lot of the build up for the Trails games there are pacing issues with this one. Cold Steel 1 had it as well but Cold Steel 3 although in some respects the game was better because you play as an instructor in other ways it was even more quickly paced. But the payoff is worth it. Trails of Cold Steel 4 where shit hits the fan we have to save the world and there are like the highs of this game outdo the lows. And there are a few lows in this one as well especially with some pacing again but I did enjoy this one a lot when it was really good so check it out and uh yeah new class 7 has some great characters as well not just old class 7 they're probably if i had to probably pick up characters off the top of my head that i've but i feel comfortable ranking because i've not played all the games yet i'd probably have sss and new class 7 up there but there are others i like as well trails into reverie this is the the after story for both the Erebonia and Crossbell arcs. So it's basically got the job of tying up two arcs and while bridging into the third with the Masked Man C, aka be careful what Falcon merchandise you look at because this person's identity is unmasked in them. So be wary of looking at Reverie stuff and I say this as someone who owns one of the t-shirts with spoilers on it. So yep, Reverie spoilers. Game is great. Probably my second favourite after Azur actually. It's that good and... It's nice seeing Lloyd and Reen being bros. And while related to Falcom, Issei Lakimosa of Dana, this is a fantastic kind of open-ended East game with this massive Isle of Siren. Great story, great characters. Best soundtrack in a modern Falcom game, at least if you exclude Legend of Heroes. And just overall, really awesome all around. East 9 Monster Knox Pact Edition. Packed Edition is not part of the game's title, but what is part of the game's title are badass costumes, badass gear, badass music, which is Falcom, and also just these really cool references to past games. So you can start here, but there are some extra references to past games, more so than other titles that you'll probably miss or not fully appreciate if you don't play them, which you don't, you, which, well, it's cool for fans. This is at the time of this. East 10's release. This is the most recent game in the East timeline chronologically, which is different from the recommended play order. So, out of the two games here on the Switch that I've got, I recommend East 8, but it's also East Origin, which I don't have, unfortunately, as well as the upcoming East 10 and East Folgana whenever that gets picked up for the West, which I can't see it not coming to the West now it's on PS4 and 5. Now we have even more JRPGs, and these are not tied to specific franchises, at least not enough to warrant their own section like I've done with the Trails and Xenoblade, so let's just get straight into it. Atelier Dust Trilogy. This probably would qualify for its own section if these games were released separately in English like they were in Japan, and this is a great set of games. Old Trilogy, they've got some of the best characters I've seen in a game for a while. I think Ezra and Logie is probably like a potential all-time favourite. If not up there, because the characters and just the vibe of being in this little village, I believe it was Call Seat or Call Set, uh, something like that, and just connecting and just preparing to build an airship to take you into the clouds. There's, a, it's just got this really happy vibe and great characters, and oh, what you work to solve the mysteries of dusk. I really hope to see. I think we're going to get a fourth dusk game at some point because the other trilogies have got one now, so. Surprise me, Gus, please. I want to see uh, Atelier Escher 2. That'd be great. Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition, aka I like Chrono Trigger. So now I've got this, I can now play Chrono Cross with accessibility features and Radical Dreamers so I can get a Vision Novel fix as well. Demon Gaze Extra, aka 
I got this game on Switch because the Vita version lacks the accessibility features added in this release and I did enjoy the Vita version back in the day. That was a fun game. I do like Demon Gaze. Probably the only Experience Inc RPG I can say confidently that I liked and probably would have finished back then if it wasn't as grindy. Demon Gaze also introduced me to the IE Vocaloid who also appears in one of my favourite games on the PS Vita, IE VT Colourful. I look forward to replaying this at some point and hopefully finishing it because badass music and dungeon crawling. Dragon Quest Builders, an experimental spin-off game in a Dragon Quest franchise that's also really good and I'm glad we got a sequel. And here is that sequel, which I've not played yet. Here is another sequel, Dragon Quest XI, that I actually have played, and it's at the time of this video is my most played Nintendo Switch RPG. 100 plus hours of Dragon Quest goodness, one of the most relaxing experiences I've ever played in a video game, and also some great characters and some great visuals, and incorporates the Japan exclusive Nintendo 3DS release for the most part. I said, yeah, when I say most part, I mean most part. I did a one hour video on Dragon Quest games in the 3DS, and there was some great stuff in the 3DS version that we never got in this version, which would be nice for a definitive edition plus plus someday. Square Enix. Electronics Origins Collection, which is the Asian English release with English text, even though the box art doesn't really suggest it. Well, it does actually on the back, because of these O's down here, it confirms it Chinese and English. So. I'm so glad Atlas are doing Asian English physical and support for their games now, even if they're not going to release them physically in the West, because Etron C deserves it, and I'm so glad this franchise is back, and I can't wait for Etron C 6, and hopefully a enhanced port of Etron Miss Dungeon 2, now that Sharon the Wanderer 6 is doing well, and I don't have that game, unfortunately. Fire Emblem Engage, one of the best gameplay systems ever in an RPG, and also some really cool art and presentation. Gust from Koei Tecmo Games helped out with development on this one, and it really shows. Grandia HD Collection, this is another duology of classic RPGs I've yet to check out. I want to check this duology out after I've done with Baton Kytos, because I'm not done with Baton Kytos Origins yet, I haven't played that, and I can jump into these. And hopefully when I get around to making best games on PS1, PS2, I might be able to talk about these by HD Masters, and I don't care if that's cheating. Because accessibility trumps cheating. Well, accessibility trumps pretty much anything really. Harvest Stella. This is a cult classic game. I'm one of those that loves it. I know a lot of people, most people who've played it in the JRPG space probably really like it, or at least to really appreciate what it tried to do. This is Square Enix's take on the farming sim RPG genre, but it is more of an RPG with just farming sim mechanics to supplement it, like picking up resources and stuff by farming it, like healing spells and food. It's really good. This is one of those games where it was made on a budget, and you can tell, what you can also tell is it had a lot of heart and a lot of development resources allocated in the right places, such as the music, which was done by Goshina, which is awesome. I really hope we get a re-release of this at some point on modern consoles. Well, the Switch is modern, but PS4, 5, Xbox, PC, even well, even um, even the Amazon thing if it's still going, Luna if that's still alive. I hope so anyway. Um, and then just. And also release a physical soundtrack and art book. Because the first anniversary, Square Enix were like, yeah, let's just tease like art book. Not art. Let's just put art on Twitter about everything we've done for this game. And not release an art book. Like, please release an art book. I would I would actually want it in the collection because the art is so good. Here it must die again, one of the most unique RPGs there is. This was made by the same person who made Orashika. And as such a unique premise, it would take probably a while to explain. I have covered this one before in a Hidden Gems video, so. I'll link that in the description, I think, because a lot of the games here are in there as well. Lambeth of Frame, Coven of Dusk. I got this a long time ago and played about half of it, but then I stopped. And now there's a sequel, Lambeth of Galarea, which is apparently one of the best LGBT-friendly games Japan has ever put out. I'm probably going to skip to Galarea and not finish Refrain, but I did enjoy my time with this. Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song Remastered. I've not played this either. I hope this is a good starting point for Saga. I figured a PS2 remake with the extra blocky visuals would fit me better than the SNES stuff. And also, nice art. SMT5, this is the base version. I got it day one, and I played it to completion, and I really enjoyed it. Not sure how I feel about SMT Vengeance. If I do play Vengeance, I'm probably not going to play it for a while, because I've already played like 50 plus hours on the original. So I'm going to see how I feel about it when it comes out, and maybe I'll get it. And if I do, I might not keep this, because this is the uh, 
quote-unquote vanilla version. Shrine the Wanderer, Tarot Fortune, Dice of Fate, this is a fantastic game that I first played on the PS Vita back when that came out in 2015. Now this game is on the Switch and PC and this sold so well, that's why Sharon 6 exists. It's a fantastic roguelike that gets, it's basically perfection in what it sets out to achieve and I, apparently Sharon 6 is even better. Tactics Ogre Reborn, aka the modern remaster of Tactics Ogre, let us cling together and a RPG that you really need to play if you like strategy games because this is where it all began. Whether it's a remaster of this game or the PSP remaster or even just the original previous releases. I'm going to do a couple of RPG LEs while I'm here as well. Silent Hope Day 1 Edition. This did not come out in Europe. We only got the standard edition and I really wanted this set so I got it from America or Canada. I got the American version. It's basically the same if you don't mind the box art in Canada but for these niche games they don't print the multi-language for a lot of time so it's just English. This is a good game, this is a roguelike as well, and has some great visuals and some lovely music. Rune Factory 4 Special Archival Edition, this is a nice set for a nice game. And one of the best things I like about this is I always wanted to try Rune Factory if it was ever brought back, and it was brought back. So I bought it, and I played it, and I liked it, and now I can't wait for more games. And now the RPGs have been safely moved to the right hand side of the table, I can now come back and do the Otomia games and then other visual novels because I have a lot of VNs too and you're going to notice a theme with some of these so let's get straight into it. First of two themes, one Otomia game. This one is by well Extend and P-Cube which yeah I feel bad about having this now because of uh, certain scandals that relate to P-Cube but that was, I got this before that blew up so I still haven't played it yet, and I um, there is a fan disc sequel esque thing. I don't really know too much about it, but I hope I like this. And also, the art is lovely. Code Realize Garden of Rebirth. This is considered to be an essential title if you're new to Otome or Vivnos more generally, and I agree. I'd say it's a solid like 8 out of 10 for me. It's not a must have title, like there are fan discs, and I don't really feel compelled to play the fan discs, but I still enjoy my time with this nonetheless. Colorex Malice, aka CXM, which is one of the acronyms that's known as in Japan, which is quite common for these developers to have these acronyms of things. This game is also really beloved as well, I've not played it yet. Had it on Vita, didn't play it. Got it on Switch, still not played it. But I heard this one's good. And apparently the endings have kink in it. That's a thing for some of these vision novels, even on the consoles. Jack Jian, this is one of the highest rated vision novels of all time on the Switch and on Metacritic. And in general, yep, even on VDB, it's just that good. I have a issue with the gameplay loop, so I have not done more than one route where it's just so long that I just kind of burnt out and had enough. However, I really appreciate what Broccoli and Sui Ishida set out to do with this game, and I really hope that we get more titles from Broccoli in the next couple of years, such as Utano Prince Sama. Love and Pretend, a really nice, happy go lucky, positive title set in the film industry. And I really like this one, it's a nice little hidden gem. And I can't wait to check out Sympathy Kiss, which has just come out on the same team that made this. Nor 9 Var Commons, an excellent game I've talked about on the channel loads of times, so check it out. I did a full 30 minute video review of this one, so I played this game for 30 hours. Go check out that review and witness the awesomeness that is life on the Nord. And then, there's a fan disc, Nor 9 Last Era, which basically tells after stories for the guys before they got on the Norn and filling in plot details, which is really cool from what I've played so far. I want to do a video on this when I've done it, which I don't know when it's going to be, but now I've wrapped up a certain trail series for the time being, I might finally be able to do that. Steam Prison. This is Hune X's most well-known vision novel, and it's a really good one. Although this was the game that taught me not to consume bad endings in games, if I can avoid it, because some of the ones here get pretty rough, especially because some of them don't make much sense for plot purposes. I'm looking forward to the fan disc. Versus Evermore Era Salvation, I did a video on this a few months ago. This is a great game. I think it's the best Otome game localized 2023, and also got some great characters, and I'm really happy to see that we're getting more titles from Ot. This is not an Otome, but Hashihimi of your Booktown Append. This is the only physical boys love vision novel on the Switch. There are a couple of Joe Smuke titles, but that's not boys love, that's platonic guy guy stuff, not sexual or romantic for that matter. But this is the only one that well, gets sexual. This is actually the only way you can play Hashihimi of the Old Book Town without adult content because the Steam version is R18. And I really wish publishers would stop making R18 only releases for Steam. 
as for the, this game, it's got lovely art and music. There's basically no choices, so it's just basically reading all the time, which is why I've not gotten too far into it. But I do want to get back to it because this looks so much like my jam. Couple of launch editions now. Biru Shanna, Rising Fire of Genpei. This is one of a handful of Red Entertainment developed vision novels to come westward. This is the Otomate collaboration one. There's also Nightshade as well, which I fucking love, but I don't have it physically. Cupid Parasite, aka Cupid Para. We're getting the fan disc in June, or, well, not dated for June formally, but that's what retailer listings say. But it's really fun. He plays Cupid. I fucking love this game. It's really funny. It's really cute. It's really sweet. And the characters are cool. The husbandos are sexy. And uh, you get to see their pecs. Yep, that's a selling point, for me anyway. Now onto the less, well, not Oterme and not BL, well, actually, well, not, well, not directly aimed at women anyway, we have more visual novels. Clanad, this is a classic game, I need to play it, I am long overdue to have another cry at a key visual novel, when the last time I did that was in like... 2016 with Harmonia, which is now coming to Steam based on Prototype Switch port, which Yeah, I need to I need to bloody play more key. I have this on Switch, have it on PC, I've not bloody played it. Oshi Rabu, Wave of Husbandos plus Level Die. This is a Yuri VN, but like I just mentioned, many of these Yuri VNs aren't actually written for women, and I think this is probably one of them, but that doesn't change the fact it's still a fun time nonetheless. I recommend getting this one on sale on Steam or on Switch if you can find it physically, because I don't think it's quite worth the price prototype are asking for it because these games are really short. So I'm hoping we get the Expression and Relato and its fan disc ported to Switch at some point soon from the same developer, which we've gotten another game from them, Curse of Kudan, which was also banned on Steam unfairly. So make of that what you will. But I want to see more girls' love and uh, also written by women. Valhalla, we're going to touch on some more. ELVNs for a bit and some more queer stuff as well. I'm not, I can't remember if this one specifically is queer, but well, it's in the visual category. There probably is some good queer web, but I know it's popular nonetheless. So one of these days, I will take off this glorious shrink wrap and play it. I took the shrink wrap off this one though, Monster Prom XXL, which is a fun time, really funny, really sweet. It's more of a dating sim hybrid than a pure visual novel, but that's what makes it cool. Some gameplay to break up and you can play it with friends. 2064 Read Only Memories. This is another classic VN that was made in the English speaking world. I have only got a few hours into this one. I'm probably going to restart it next time I get back to it. This is the kind of game that makes me anxious to play for some reason. Like, there's games I have that I want to play, I just get anxious. So I just can't play it because I'm just anxious and just want to spoil myself so I know what to expect. So I can be like, oh, oh, I know what's happened. For some reason, I'm not anxious anymore because it's happened elsewhere. But yeah, I need to get back to this one. And it's, but also, it does have some great music, so that's a huge plus. House in Fata Morgana, this is another, one of the best rated VNs ever made. It once had a perfect score on Metacritic, uh, 100, literally, and it's still up there with the likes of Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I've got all the popular gems in this video, and I can't wait to see what the developer has to come up with next. I haven't finished this, this is a pack of three VNs, one of which is exclusive to consoles, so... We'll probably not get it on PC anytime soon, at least not officially anyway. So I definitely recommend this game. It's very much a it's not it lacks the voice acting you find in visual novels, but it has the presentation and the unique visual charm and music to more than make up for it. A couple of VN launch editions now. Reiji Jin Lu P or Raging Loop. This is a popular VN that's but from the last five or so years, which I need to get back to because I really like what I played of it. World End Syndrome, this is a PAL exclusive physical release for another Toy Box Inc. developed vision novel who also made Seven Scarlet, which is an Otome game I have on the Vita, but also not played. Yep, I'm very fucking predictable, aren't I? What is not predictable, though, is just how good this game is, especially in the last route. It is a true hidden gem, and I hope more people can check it out. Arc System Works never brought this to PC for some reason, which is really strange. Now we're going to go to a few physical indie games for the most part or not all indies but miscellaneous things that could fall under indie which i am not big on limited print runs as much anymore because of just how capitalism has basically ruined them and basically turned them into something where let's get games that shouldn't be physical physical even when the games are actually good case in point a short hike 
which was one of the best rated games of 2022. It's only a few hours long, so this is a game that I do recommend. I think it's great, but get it on sale on Steam or consoles or something. Don't buy this physically unless you have way too much money to spend. It was a lot at launch. I thought it was longer, but it's not as long as I thought it'd be. It's literally a short hike. Next up is Celeste, which is one of the best indie games of all time. One of my favourites, and it now has a wider retail release in Europe and North America, so you can check it out now instead of paying too much money for this limited run physical release. Oh, and the best part, it's not only very neurodivergent, it's also very queer, and it's very cool, and you should check it out. Dust and Elysian Tale, this is another fantastic indie game, largely developed by one person, and became a hit on Xbox Live Arcade. I'm really glad it's got a Switch port and a physical release, because it's really, really good. Golf Story, this was a quite popular Switch RPG in the early years of its life. I got this physical release because it had so many good things, and it met my expectations. It's a, like very nice and relaxing, it felt like a wholesome adventure with between two guys and father and son. It was really cool, and I'm very glad that the devs have managed to go on to make things like Sports Story and had some success there too. And hope that gets a physical at some point too. Hopefully at retail. Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series. This is another Bandai Namco physical but is exclusive to everywhere outside of North America. It's a great game as well. I've only played the first one, not the second one. I need to go back and do it. But fun times all around. SpongeBob Squarepants. Bad for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. I grew up playing SpongeBob games. And this is how you can tell, because I have this, because even if you don't like Spongebob, it's still pretty cool in its own right, so I definitely recommend it. This is fantastic. Alongside its de facto sequel, Spongebob Squarepants, The Cosmic Shape. Oh wait, I meant Spongebob Squarepants, but it doesn't matter at this point because I've already said it. This is good as well. It's shorter than I expected it to be, so I would definitely get this one on sale, but you'll have a fun time regardless of how much you pay for this. But make sure you pay for it. Couple more indie releases now. Cuphead, the Super Deluxe Games Japanese Limited Edition, which I did an unboxing for a long time ago, back when I did unboxings. So go check that out if you're so inclined. The game is great too, so check it out too. It's fun. It's also really hard, and I uh, never finished it because, yeah, it looks great though. Grizz, this is the Special Reserve Games Limited Edition, which um, if you were around in gaming last year, you might remember Special Reserve Games were shuttered now, so... This is a curio, and this is also now at retail, so much like Celeste, I recommend getting this at retail and not paying too much money for this set. This game is also only a few hours long, but it's also amazing. This little set comes with some bonus art cards too, which probably makes it one of my favourite items in the collection, especially for such a great game. Sonic Mania Plus, this is, I, this is basically an indie game because it was developed by indie devs, and it was Sega doing a rare great move with Sonic outside of the, in, regarding the games anyway, but the things like Sonic Med Hedgehog social media account was it's funny and it's always good. And there was also the Murderous Sonic Hedgehog Visional, which also needs a physical release and voice acting. And that's like this game. With a lovely art book, you can see Sonic, Tails, and these two, I forgot their names, and all these logos, the companies. It's really fun. And the art, the Ellie's nice. Well, except this. <laughs> it comes out too easily. We're almost done now. I've only got like six games left. And these six titles are going to start with rhythm titles and then get into stuff that's Japanese exclusive that I cannot read yet. So let's get straight into them. Taiko no Tachin Drum and Fun. This has now been delisted. So you can only get this physically now, which I recommend it. It's a great game. And was what really brought Taiko no Tachin back into the mainstream on Nintendo Switch because it had largely been, well, it kind of needed a shake-up and it was the best-selling Taiko game at the time. I think it probably got overtaken now. There's Room Festival too, which I really want to pick up at some point, so. Taiko is great. Play it. It's amazing. Kazuna AI Touch to Beat. This is a rhythm game by Gem Drops, who developed Crystar and the Star Ocean 2 remake. It's basically IABT Colorful 2. You remember that game I showed earlier? It's basically that, but for the Switch. But obviously not developed by the same people. Or with the same Vocaloid. And also Kizuna is cute. So there's that. I can see why she's popular. But I'm not going to be a VTuber stay anytime soon. I only prefer 2D people in games. And not VTubers. Bangdori for Nintendo Switch. This is a full priced 
microtransaction free port of the mobile game with all the content and updates as of 2021, including for limited events. I'm really glad that we got this port because I finally checked out Bandori after seeing a lot more online friends being like, yeah, this game is fucking awesome, Miller, you should play it, and seeing the cute characters, and I can see why, but I just wish it was in English. Yeah, Bushy Road did not localize this port, and I honestly thought they should have done. Like, why would you not localize this? Like, you're not having to charge extra server costs to run servers, you can just have this on here and it's free, you get new audience. And it is a good port, I like this game, and the music's great, I just wish we had it in English. And I honestly thought we'd get it, but it's been like a couple of years now and it's not happened, so it's probably not coming at this point. And Bushy Road pretty much do everything in English nowadays. Angelique Luminarize. This is Koei Tecmo's reboot of the Angelique series. I want to play this. I did my Rue Party video, I spent almost 50 minutes talking about them, go check that video out too. I really hope we get a new Rue Party game soon. And in English, I believe it will happen because it's been like two years since they did a console project. We did a phone game in that time. So I think the next console project is probably going to have a worldwide release. But one day, I will know enough Japanese and play that. UCF for Tarnished Wings. Now alongside White Album 2, this was one of the games I wanted to learn Japanese for outside of Otome games. And well, White Album 2 now is translated unofficially and is only a matter of time before that gets officially released to PC. Not announced yet, but I'm confident it's coming. Then there's Ustia, which is seemingly not going to get picked up at all by anyone given the developer. But it doesn't stop me wanting to read it on the Switch and hopefully learn Moon Runes. I'm trying at least every day to practice, so it will happen slowly and I'll still have this. And maybe by then it will be in English and then Sod's Law, I suppose. And finally, one of the most unique games ever to come to the Switch, Furaiki 4, aka... This is Fog, aka Full On Games' most recent title. They're now a part of NIS, and this is a very unique visual novel dating sim crossed with photography in real life Japan. It's such a unique game, and I really want to see this in English. I previously kind of ruled it out, but then last year NIS were like, yeah, let's release Process of Elimination, our first visual novel from our parent company. So I think there's a chance we'll get this. I hope it happens. They've not announced any new NIS games in a while, I just hope Process of Animation sold well enough. Unfortunately, I never got around to picking it up as much as I intended to, so it's not here. So, I guess I'm probably not going to find it unless it gets another reprint or something, because... Yeah. I wish I got it. So as you can see, I've amassed quite a pile of Switch games. And I'm looking forward to adding many more games to the collection and playing through them. And, well appreciating this console even more even after the Switch 2 inevitably comes out. So what are some Switch games that you think I should add to my collection? HD 2D stuff is definitely up there, I know I need to get those and also still hoping to get some Japanese imports as well such as Mahoyo Switch release which is multi-language, uh, Butterfly's Poison and also tracking down Nightshade and some more of prototypes releases. So there's probably more I'm forgetting, well Kirby as well. Either way, I'm going to stop rambling for now because this video is going to be like, well, 40 minutes long, maybe more when I'm done. So thank you so much for watching and liking, commenting, subscribing, really membership if you feel like it. Uh, thank you so much. Have a lovely day, week, month, year, and happy seventh birthday to the glorious Nintendo Switch. Bye bye.